Good evening. Today we will unpack, install and look at this Behringer UMC22 budget USB audio interface. This Behringer UMC22 costs around $60. Even cheaper is the Behringer UM2, which costs about $45, but I enjoyed this plastic construction. Let's get to the case and let's see what we get for about $60. A box in the typical Behringer look, there's not much on the box, then carefully open it with a knife and look what we have inside. As per usual, the set includes a pile of toilet paper. Or as people call it, manual. But what's this? A sticker. I only think of one manufacturer that has them in package, and that's Apple. It is worth looking into manual if you use the USB audio interface for the first time. It is shown here how to connect everything correctly. Enough theory, we are interested in the thing that's in the box. I would say that it's very securely packed and of course that the kit also includes a little stimulating powdering because who can produce good music without a white nose. Be careful with the knife to not scratch the powerful sound interface. Here's our much anticipated DSA. you can feel its metal body. Theater of all virgin films, because on my table this USB sound will have to experience evil itself to be picked up. Looks better than I expected at this price. Everything you could want to become more professional in the eyes of friends. That's an upgrade for your setup. Or as gamers would say, a level up. The last thing that can be found in the package is the USB cable. It provides both data flow and power supply for this audio interface. This Behringer UMC22 does not have a separate power adapter, as it would for more serious sound cards. Glad that the wire also has a ferry filter and the wire is long enough for all life situations. A little about the inputs and outputs of this card. On the back we see a place for USB connection, which is intended for connecting this card to a computer, just plug and play. Then there's the 48 volt phantom power switch, when you're using a microphone that needs that 48 volt phantom power. The last thing on the back of this audio interface is the left and right main outputs, stereo audio amplifier or studio monitors, but to connect Logitech or other home audio you'll need a transition cable. Sometime I will upload a video on how to make it yourself. And that's all about the ports that are on the back. There are two inputs on the front and a headphone output, which is 6.35mm or 1.4 inch stereo jack output and next to it is an output volume knob for headphones and main outputs. On the other side is an XLR mic preamp output. This output can also be connected to the wires with a 1.4 inch plug. Next to it is the small 1.4 inch output which is for instruments such as guitar and synthesizer. Next to these outputs is a microphone button with a signal level and a clip indicator lights. The next gain to knob is for instrument input level adjustment. When you turn on direct monitor, everything you say in your microphone you also hear in your headphones. So to speak, that will be all that this card has from inputs to outputs. So then. What is my opinion about this card? I've been using it for several weeks now and I'm more surprised than I expected because I didn't expect much from this recipient for the $60, but the mic noise is excellent. Also, the Phantom power works brilliantly and my Sennheiser HD555 also sounds better with this card's headphone amp. Nothing scratches and it works stable and I also like its metal body. I hope to soon upload a video about their XLR mic setup. Is it better than the Blue Yeti USB mic setup? In any case, I can recommend this card completely at 100%. It surprised me more than I expected from it. Post a comment about what mic setup you're currently using. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to push the like button and subscribe so we could meet in another audio related video. Bye.